It's time to tackle a subject I've flirted with, but never really plunged into, choosing your first pair of speakers. Now, whether you're a total noob or thinking about stepping up and pulling the trigger on that upgrade you've been pining over, this video is going to be your speaker Bible. With a time machine and the wisdom I've gained, I wish I could go back to my first speaker buying experience, but since that's not possible, I'll do the next best thing. I will share all those nuggets of knowledge with all of you guys. Consider this video your golden blueprint, your trusted guide to navigating the exciting and sometimes overwhelming world of speaker shopping. So if you're on the cusp of bringing home your first set of speakers, Let's figure out this adventure together. Let's get to it. Let's talk basics. When we say loudspeakers, we're talking about a device which converts electrical signals into sound. They come in all shapes, sizes, and types. Floor standing, bookshelf, satellite, subwoofers, in-wall, outdoor, up, down, left, right. You name it, there's a speaker for it. For this video, we'll mainly focus on floor standing and bookshelf speakers. Floor standing speakers are tall, require more space, and typically provide a wider range of sound. Bookshelf speakers are smaller, more affordable, and ideal for small spaces. Now, before we dive deep, let's quickly talk about budget. This is a crucial first step. Are you looking to spend a few hundred dollars or are you ready to make it rain? Remember, you don't need to break the bank to get good quality sound. There's something for everyone in the loudspeaker market. It's also good to know that just because the manufacturer spent thousands of dollars on the finest materials for the aesthetic of the enclosures, does not mean that the cost attached to the retail price of those speakers will actually translate into sound quality improvements. If you take the same drivers, put them into like a, I don't know, $50 flat pack with the same crossover design and interior dimensions, good quality, mind you, MDF, chances are they will sound quite similar to the grandiose enclosures adorned with diamonds and snakeskin. However, I do know that a cool aesthetic is important to many of you, so just keep in mind, the cooler it looks, chances are the more expensive they'll be. Now, if you're seeking a blend of good looks and quality sound without busting your bank, check out the entry-level loudspeakers from Sonus Faber. They've achieved a beautiful harmony between stunning design, sound quality, and affordability, making them an ideal choice for anyone interested in getting enormous value. I'll link them down below and I have reviewed them before, so check that out right here. Now that we have that all sorted, let's steer our sound journey towards the crossroads where we have three exciting paths awaiting us. Buying brand new, exploring the used market, or channeling our inner craftsman with the DIY route. Each route comes with its own set of perks and challenges. I hope after this segment that you will be able to discover which path resonates best with your audio aspirations. Buying new is the simplest but potentially the most expensive option, but with new speakers you'll have a warranty and you'll know they haven't been used and abused. Specifications like frequency response, impedance sensitivity, power handling, and size do matter. It's especially important when pairing your brand new speakers with a fresh new amplifier. However, don't get too caught up in the numbers game. Use them as a guide, but remember your ears are the ultimate judge. Reading online reviews or watching some of mine here on YouTube can give you insights into what we all think of the speakers you are looking at. However, remember, sound is highly subjective, and what sounds great to one person might not to another. Me, as a reviewer, must keep an open mind, but I personally have my biases since I prefer a more smooth and warm sound of my speakers, so horn low its tweeters and stuff like that and bright speakers in general don't really resonate well with me when they are probably the next guy's favorite forever speakers. Now onto one of the most crucial steps in your speaker buying journey, the audition. Nothing beats experiencing the sound quality of the speakers with your own ears. Arm yourself with a diverse playlist of your favorite music for this session. Now I know, finding a hi-fi shop in today's digital age might seem like hunting for unobtainium, but trust me, if there's one within a reasonable distance showcasing the speakers you have your eyes on, it's definitely worth the trip. Think about it. This is an investment that will harmonize your auditory world for many, many, many years to come. So getting that reassurance before you commit is a smart move. Some of my favorite brands you should check out include Dolly, Aperion Audio, Sonus Faber, Q Acoustics, and Martin Logan. That should start you off right. 
Let's now turn to the used market. It really is an amazing place to find quality speakers at a fraction of the cost. Where do we look? Well, there's a range of options. Local audio stores sometimes have pre-loved units that are still in excellent condition. Online platforms such as Facebook Marketplace, which is where I found my speakers, eBay and Macari are also rich hunting grounds, as are dedicated audio marketplaces like Audio Gone and US Audio Mart and stuff like that. However, keep in mind that the used market is a bit like the Wild West of speaker shopping. It offers great deals, but it also has its risks. Here are a few pointers to help you navigate safely. Ask for a demo. Insist on listening to the speakers before buying them. This is crucial to ascertain the condition of the speakers themselves. Check for physical damage. Carefully examine the speakers for any signs of damage, any wear and tear, are the drivers intact, is there any visible uh, blemishes on the cabinets. Remember, aesthetic damage could indicate potential mistreatment. Ask about the speaker's history. Has the speaker been repaired or modified? Has it been overdriven or exposed to humidity? This information can help you avoid potential pitfalls. Be wary of too good to be true deals. Everyone loves a bargain, but if a deal seems too good, it might be. Be cautious and do your due diligence. Research the model. Look up the speaker online to find reviews and discussions. This can give you an idea of the speaker's performance and any common issues to look out for. Negotiate. In the used market, prices are often negotiable. Don't be afraid to make a reasonable offer. I have had many Mexican standoffs in the middle of people's living rooms over the price of audio gear. Remember, with patience, keen observation, and a bit of negotiating savvy, the used market could land you an absolute gem for your first pair of loudspeakers. Now, rolling up your sleeves and venturing into the DIY territory can be an incredibly rewarding experience. Yes, it's going to require a fair share of patience, commitment, and some technical acumen, but the payoff can be absolutely worth it. Now, when we talk about DIY speakers, we typically mean kits that provide you with the whole shebang, everything from cabinets and drivers to crossovers and all the necessary bits and pieces. But here's a little personal twist I like to add. I love delving deep into the design process of the enclosure, handpicking the finest drivers and commissioning the creme de la creme in the field to build the enclosure to my exact specifications. Then I commission someone to design and assemble the crossovers, essentially bringing all the parts together for the grand finale, a unique, one-of-a-kind speaker crafted to perfection. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for anyone. This approach doesn't come cheap, and it may not be the most practical starting point for anyone, but the end result is a breathtaking speaker that's as aesthetically pleasing as it is sonically exceptional. I am working on a couple of these projects that I will be revealing very soon. But for the purpose of this discussion, let's go ahead and keep our feet on the ground and stick with the traditional DIY approach, which is a more budget-friendly and beginner-oriented method. Building your own speakers allows you to have an intimate understanding of your audio equipment, but more importantly, it can provide an unrivaled sense of satisfaction and accomplishment when you listen to a beautiful piece of music on speakers you've built with your own hands. Here are some things to consider when going the DIY route. Understand your skill level. DIY speakers require some technical knowledge and a fair bit of handiwork. If you're not comfortable with soldering or woodworking, you might want to start with a simpler kit rather than diving deep into your own custom design. Pay attention to the cabinet. The cabinet or enclosure plays a significant role in the overall sound quality. So whether you're building it yourself or it comes pre-made, just ensure that it's of good quality, good quality MDF or even wood, and sized for the correct internal air requirements of the drivers you're using. Crossover design. This electronic filter circuit is crucial as it determines which frequency ranges go to which drivers. Understanding and correctly assembling this can significantly influence your speaker's sound quality. Don't cheap out on this, and if you can have someone design these for you, even better. I have tried the cheapy ones from Parts Express, and I would... Not to recommend that whatsoever. You can't build the Ferrari of enclosures and then fill it with Geo Metro parts on the inside. It just makes no sense. Time and patience. Building speakers is not a race. It takes time and patience, especially for those of you just starting out. But remember, every step you take is a learning experience. Tools. Depending on the kit, you may need some basic tools like a soldering iron, wire strippers, screwdrivers, clamps, and a drill. Make sure you're prepared. Most kits and videos online will specify which which tools you will need. This is also a fantastic way 
to amass more tools, which is always a good problem to have. Room for creativity. One of the coolest aspects of DIY speakers is the opportunity to customize. From the finish of the cabinet to the types of components you use, you can truly make these speakers your own. Having that one of one set of speakers is so ridiculously satisfying. Remember, the DIY route isn't for everyone, but for those who are up for the challenge and willing to learn, it could be a fantastic and enriching experience that not only results in a great pair of speakers, but also a wealth of knowledge and skills. Before wrapping things up, I want to invite you into my personal audio journey. As a young boy, the hypnotic range of frequencies emitted by the 80s and 90s loudspeakers held me captive. My brother was a huge fan of the Soren Vega floor standards, and their generous bass output left a lasting impression on me. For years, I chased speakers that could deliver an exceptional sound experience without the need for a separate subwoofer. But alas, the tides of the audio world are ever changing. Bookshelf speakers have grown in popularity and manufacturers are increasingly leaning towards smaller drivers that emphasize mid-range and high-end clarity nothing wrong with that, which has inevitably led to a compromise on that deep resonant bass we once took for granted. This evolution led me to the classic Infinity Kappas, which are in my current reference setup. They harken back to those bass rich days, which still deliver on modern sound standards. But remember, there's no harm in pairing your chosen speakers with a subwoofer. It's actually become the standard these days. In fact, I do find pairing bookshelf speakers with a robust 12 inch subwoofer to be a sublime way to enjoy the full dynamics of the music I love. This combo can bring out the richest layers of your favorite songs, leaving you fully immersed in the experience. Don't forget to ask a lot of questions. There are always helpful folks online that are more than happy to help you on your journey, as well as guide you through the process. Sharing our experiences, the pitfalls, and the wins are always a great way to inspire one another for sonic greatness. If you enjoyed the video, I would love for you to tell the like button a joke. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I will see you on the next one, my friends. Take care.